Recyclico, making lithium ion last forever. Recyclico's patented recycling process achieves up to 100% recovery of battery metals from lithium ion batteries for electric vehicles, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, and aluminum. Recyclico Battery Materials Incorporated trades on the TSX Venture AMY, on the OTCQB AMYZF, and Frankfurt ID4. For more information, visit Recyclico.com or phone us at 778-574-4444. Recyclico, making lithium ion last forever. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR Newsletters, also known as VRTrader.com. He's speaking to us from Arizona. Welcome back to the show, Mark. Glad to be here, Jim. You know, it's a lot of tumultuous times here in events, economically, financially, politically, uh, even geocosmically, you know, with that Afghan uh, earthquake a couple weeks ago. Uh, I mean, so much stuff going on. But anyway... uh, You know, I'm not a financial advisor, nor do I provide financial advice, but, you know, I do a lot of technical work and a lot of cyclical and geopolitical commentary because it all ties together with, uh, you know, trying to survive the financial markets. Do we have a special offer for listeners? For those who'd like to subscribe to VR Trader, that's victorrobertrader.com. Uh, you go to VR Trader, and uh, when you pick up one of the newsletter order forms, there's a place a promo code, and the promo code spot you enter 2022 half off. 2022 half off, you get 50 percent off of any of my of my newsletters. Thank you for mentioning it. With all the turmoil in the Middle East, is it a surprise oil hasn't uh, exploded in price? It's going to. It was up uh, again today, and it hasn't taken out the 93 high, but uh, it's going to. It's going to, you know, I'm, you know, hundred dollars is a fair number, and ultimately through 140, which was the high I think we saw back in 2007, and ultimately I think we're going to 200. But you know, I don't have a time frame whether that's one year or five years, but it's going to go up there. There, you know, there's, there's so much, you know going on with the oil market and trying to understand, you know, the restraints that were put on Iran, for example, and then you find out that uh, even though there were restrictions on the uh, their production, they're actually it increased. Uh, I, think, I guess they weren't watching things very carefully with regard to uh, the Iranian restrictions, many of which have been removed. Uh, I mean... <laughs> It, 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 the bottom line is, despite that increase, uh, there's still demand for it. Um, you know, we, we just have a big world out there that, you know, if you have a war machine running, you know, that, that they're not running on EV electric vehicles, that's for sure. So, yep, I, uh, I'm still a bull on oil. And, uh, yeah, there are going to be some dips along the way, but we've been in the oil play here now for few months but still overall positive short term and long term though uh we you know we have to recognize there could be some little dips along the way we had big winners in our newsletter for example we talked about uh pioneer oil and gas it was sort of a story out there for months that exxon might was looking at them as a possible takeover we had it on our recommended list and sure enough story came out in the past uh, week or so about exxon you know buying uh pioneer oil which which I don't know, doubles or increases Exxon's capabilities significantly. Uh, you know, so we participated in that. As you know, we've been following uh, Warren Buffett and Occidental Petroleum. He owns 25% of the company. And he's not, from the last I heard, he's one of the smartest investors out there. And I don't think he sold any of his stock, or at least I haven't heard it, have that in any of the reports yet. So oil is one of the, definitely one of the places to be. It's interesting. Warren Buffett is still so interested in the markets and gaining wealth. He's one of the world's richest people. He's in his 90s, and yet uh, he's just addicted to the game, isn't he? I guess so. You got to do what you love. You know, uh, Charlie Munger is partner, too. Uh, I think he's even a couple years older than uh, Warren. You know, uh, listen, you know, you can make a few billion and live into your 90s and have some fun doing it. (laughs) I'm all for it. I mean, you know... uh, 
you know, look at Henry Kissinger. We're going to change subjects here for a second. You know, he's a hundred, and he's still providing advice, uh, commentary uh, about the war, and about what we should be doing and not doing with regard to political strategy in Europe and the Middle East. Uh, you know, age is, is all relative. My one of my favorite people of all time is William Shatner from Star Trek. He's in his early nineties, and he runs a show on the History Channel. Uh, talking about, you know, uh, uh, the unexplained, you know, unexplained events around the world and so forth. And for someone in his 90s to be doing that is incredible. So uh, a- age is uh, all relative, I suppose, Jim, you know. Gosh, I interviewed Henry Kissinger when I was 18 years old. Really? Yeah. Uh, there was some kind of dispute about potash between Saskatchewan and Washington. So I just called the White House switchboard and asked for Henry Kissinger Hello, Dr. Kissinger here. Really, it was that easy to get a hold of government officials back then. Try doing that today. <laughs> How'd the interview go? Oh, great. Yeah, he was very well aware of, of the issues uh, involving uh, Saskatchewan and, and the U.S., and he was hoping that it would be quickly resolved because the world needs potash for fertilizer, and uh, the issue was resolved. But I just thought it was pretty unique that some 18 year old kid in his second radio job could get a hold of henry kissinger but it's the old if you don't try you never know so give it a shot right absolutely and it it gives him a lot of credit that he took the call and uh it all worked out for all all parties but yeah the you brought up uh the age thing with warren and so forth yeah i'm uh you know god God bless him let him keep doing it uranium is uh, is that a hot product now? It is. I mean, it had a little trading top here in the last week or so, but it's been strong for the longest time. Some of the shares came off a little bit. Uh, Cameco, the I guess that's more, more of the blue chip names in the sector, pulled back, you know, from the low 40s to the mid 30s. But uh, as we talked in previous interviews, you know, there's, de- there's demand out there, and the price has gone up. And you know, I can't put my finger on the reason for it, other than you and I know, or many in the know know that you know this is the future, and you need nuclear power and uh, and uranium. But uh, where is it actually going? I mean, where is it actually being absorbed? Is the military buying it for uh, you know space use uh, for uh, uh, warships, submarines, and so forth, which they've been doing anyway? Uh, some other plans out there because we don't see a bunch of nuclear plants being built in North America. The only other one I've heard about, we've mentioned this before, is that new plant in Georgia in the U.S. So it's not like, you know, every state is, is booming with nuclear plants that that would perhaps explain the surge in the uranium price. But obviously someone's buying it and hopefully it's, uh, you know, it's for the best use, you know, not just for atomic weapons, you know. Is there much action in gold right now? I hear China's on a real buying spree. Oh, gold's doing fine. You know, it's up again today. Uh, You know, there's a good chance. You know, my model was positive all year. You know, it didn't say straight up, but, you know, sort of a general trend overall higher. So I'm trying to give it the benefit of the doubt. And that was despite the fact the U.S. dollar was strong recently. And that, you know, put a little dent in it short term. But now we've seen the dollar strong along with gold. And I've warned many times that... You can't uh, tie these markets together inversely. You have to look at each one, see how it's acting technically, fundamentally, and so forth, cyclically. And sometimes markets uh, like these can run together, even though supposedly they're supposed to trade inversely. So, yeah, there's a chance we might go. hopefully uh, take out that 2080, 2070 high uh, range, and then uh, that would break a triple top formation. And if that happens... Uh, you know, we can imagine all kinds of numbers, but you know, twenty three, twenty four hundred become become possible. Of course, we're talking priced in U.S. dollars here, so I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt. I mean, the overall models had strength into the end of the year, at least into November or so. So let's see how far we can how far we can get here. And uh, um, there's a little bit more of a run coming. And uh, I guess if we can't break through that twenty seventy top. You know, when I say break through it on a closing basis, then then we're going to have a quadruple top, <laughs> which is very unusual in technical analysis. And then I don't know what you do with that one. We'll have to just, until it breaks through, it's an old expression, you know, the markets go up, knock, knock. You know, they knock, knock at a certain resistance level or support level, and eventually they break through. 
So uh, we'll see if uh, that happens now. But yeah, I'm definitely giving it the benefit of the doubt. And this this is unrelated to uh, what's happening in the Middle East and well, uh, you know, everything else. I'm just looking at the charts. I'm just looking at what's going on and. Uh, the indicator said, you know, you can say, well, maybe it's tied to the extraordinary world debt that we have, which will probably never get paid back. You know, we have, uh, you know, the worst problem we have facing the financial uh, global system now is the incredibly large unrealized losses in the banks and pension funds and mutual funds on their long-term bond portfolios. This could be another Lehman event, <laughs> you know, and then gold will become, I guess, even more desirable. But the other side of the coin is, and I, I, I hate to put a, you know, any cold water on it, is that there's, it's a manipulated market. Of course, you can say that about the stock market here in the U.S. and the, certainly the Japanese market, but. Uh, you know, if you know if powers that be don't uh, put their thumb on the rally, you know, uh, gold could uh, really take off. And there have been stories, of course, that a lot of the central banks have been accumulating gold. You mentioned China. We know Russia has been accumulating gold. So, you know, despite the fact that it's considered an archaic, uh, you know, mode of uh, doing business, it's been around thousands of years, and it seems like all those central banks and all the governments around the world are hell-bent to accumulate gold. So there's something coming, you know, uh, how big it'll be, we don't know. It's tied to the digitization of, of the currencies, you know, the blow-up of the economies because of the debt. Uh, you know, the World Economic Council and Klaus Schwab is licking his chops, looking for everything to collapse. So uh, we, we won't own anything, but we'll be happy, and they'll take over at some point. So there's all this nonsense. I keep saying you got all physical stuff, you know, real estate, gold, commodities. If you have a farm and you know producing crops and things, you know, these are much better places for your money than uh, the stock market or the banks. But uh, that's just my own personal prejudice, you know, not trusting the system. Mm -hmm. We'll have more with Mark Leibovitz right after this. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com Weekly Recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mark Leibovitz. Mark, what's going on with the U.S. dollar? It's still up. You know, it's not running away. It seems to hit like a little trading top here the last couple of days, but it's still, you know, in a... And a chart analysis is still in an uptrend, so you know you got to give it the benefit of the doubt. I think you know in times of uncertainty, uh, money flows to uh, the strongest currency, which you know is still considered the dollar, despite all the attempts or discussion, I should say, not real attempts, you know, over the BRIC nations and their plan to uh, dethrone the dollar as the uh, the king currency. So uh, you know, for the time being particularly with this war and with the, you know, the uh, destabilization of the world financial system and the debt, which is, is all out there, you know, not talked about every second. We're only talking about whether Chairman Powell, the Federal Reserve, who spoke today, is going to raise rates again or not, <laughs> and whether we're beating inflation, which we're not. Uh, besides all of that discussion, you know, uh, you know, the dollar is still a bastion of safety, so I still think it's going to hang in there for a while. There's also a political comment here under U.S. Democratic administrations, dollars tend to tend, tends to go up, and under uh, Republican administrations, it's a very general comment, but you can see the pattern tends to go down. So as long as the Democrats are in control in the U.S., uh, the dollar, at least on historical basis, has a greater chance of being up than down, and that changes after uh, next year's election, and we can see whether that correlation, you know, in uh, con you know, continues to exist, and the dollar reverses lower. But uh, that just, you know, based on a casual observation of many decades of the movement of the dollar against uh, the politics here in the U.S. So we'll just, uh, you know, just have to watch that. Is it hard to gain voter confidence for the Republicans when they can't even organize a vote for the Speaker of the House? I'm sure that's the case, uh, Jim. It's really disappointing. You know, it seems like the Democrats and getting we're getting into politics here. They seem to you know vote as a block and stick together. You know, you whether you they all believe in you know what's what the party line is or not. They tend to more 
work in unison, and the Dem Republicans seem to fight, and you got a bunch of Republicans that they call rhinos, you know, Republican in name only, and they're really not Repub- Republicans. It's really a mess. You know, I, I could see where someone like uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. would want to, uh, you know, vote, you know, not vote, run as on a separate ticket and not then leave the Democratic Party and, you know, not even participate in that nonsense. And certainly I don't think the Republicans want him, but... Uh, it's uh, it's crazy, you know. We, uh, I'm not saying every Democrat should vote the line and every Republican should vote the line, but that still seems to be the case for the Democrats more than the Republicans. So, uh, in fact, they can't nominate a Speaker of the House. Uh, you know, part of it is too is they don't have a, a real clear majority. I mean, they have a very narrow majority in the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives. You know, I think it's like 20 or 30 votes or something like that. It's a very nominal number you know it's not like they have an overwhelming control that they've had in the past so uh you know you have to have a lot of democrats vote along with them to nominate a new speaker and you know many of the candidates were sympathizers to uh, or or allies of donald trump and since many of the democrats don't like donald trump you know getting a uh, speaker of the house that any association with trump uh, becomes more and more difficult so who knows? You know, this is yeah, this is another reason to be bearish and concerned about the markets. We can't even get our own government in order. I mean, in theory, if something happened to Biden and uh, you know the vice president, uh, what's her name? I'm losing my uh, <laughs> thought already. Kamala happen- Harris. Yeah, Kamala Harris. Something happens to them. Let's say you know they, you know they get both on a plane and it crashes and we lose the president and vice president. Well, who's in charge of the country? It's the Speaker of the House. That's the third in line. And we don't even have that person there. So if something happened to the president, vice president, we don't even have a, a backup uh, president, so to speak, the way the system works here in this country. So, uh, you know, you know, life is transitory. You know, who knows what could happen when? I mean, I was nervous. Even though I'm not a Biden supporter, I was nervous for him going into Israel uh, yesterday. You know, I mean, it's a very dangerous area. I guess if you're going to fly in, you might as well fly in, fly in on Air Force One with uh, all the military prote- uh, protection, right? <laughs> so he's probably safer than anyone else. Most airlines have, or all airlines have canceled flights into Israel except El Al, which is a national airline. But uh, uh, getting off on a tangent here a little bit. But anyway, uh, the House of Representatives is a mess. I don't know when they're going to solve this. They can't seem to get enough votes to back anyone. What's going on with cryptos? Uh, very strong pop in Bitcoin the last uh, couple of days. There was a rumor that came out, I think it was yesterday, the day before, that the uh, BlackRock, Larry Fink, he's the head of uh, BlackRock, which is uh, the largest money management firm in the world, uh, you know, they had made application to the SEC for an approval of an exchange-traded fund, ETF, for Bitcoin, and um, it was pending in the, some, before the market opened, I think, I think it was two days ago, you know, the rumor, oh, they got approved. So the Bitcoin ETF exploded up, and it was trading into the low 20s. You know, this thing was down to 8 bucks just a few months ago. So it's tied, you know, more or less to um, to the uh, Bitcoin. So that took off on that story. I think they'll get approved one way or another, but it's funny how that rumor came out and it took off. And then I also the story that... GBTC, the Bitcoin Trust, which is not an ETF, which is an existing vehicle that uh, we have in our newsletter, and we've had it as a you know a position for quite some time, um, is another way you could play Bitcoin, and that also you know took off along with uh, you know with this rally. And I I heard story that uh, they are, they themselves are going to apply to become an exchange traded fund, so somehow they could convert this. Bitcoin trust into an ETF, and uh, that would trade too. So that is rumored, or I read somewhere just recently that they're thinking of applying to become an exchange traded fund themselves. So that means you'll have two if Larry Fink's uh, BlackRock version gets approved, and this one also gets approved. But neither has happened yet. But the speculation is keeping the price of Bitcoin up. So that's sort of the uh, that's the story. Yeah, I mean, there's no question. A lot of money's behind it. And with the uncertainty regarding currencies, uncertainty regarding the financial stability of the banks and the systems, to own something outside the system, which is essentially Bitcoin, is not such a bad idea. And I think uh, one would one, one would want to consider that. Anything happening on the geocosmic front? 
Nothing real exciting. I've been tracking it pretty carefully here, other than that earthquake in Afghanistan a couple, you know, a week or so back. You know, this, you know, a couple thousand people died in that thing. You know, we lost uh, 1,200 Israelis and who knows what else, and there's this war going on right now, and that's terrible tragedy. But, you know, 2,000 people in Afghanistan on an earthquake is pretty serious, too, so we're not paying a lot of attention to the geocosmic you know, uh, consequences of living on Earth here. There's so many things like this that go on all the time. So we had the uh, sort of partial uh, solar eclipse uh, this past weekend. Uh, it was interesting watching the videos. Not much excitement about that. Um, I did want to point out, though, um, a little study that we did that uh, actually I read this years ago, that uh, wars tend to break out around new moons. So the new moon was on the 14th, which is a few days, you know, either side of when this war in Israel started. So it's just an interesting uh, tidbit that I picked up that if you're going to start a war, maybe it's because war started in ancient times because it was a new moon and it was dark and it was more sensible to attack than during a full moon when there's light at night. But the new moon seemed to be coincident with... Um, you know, the starting of wars, so uh, I, I had mentioned that in the newsletter, and, you know, it wasn't the exact day, it was a few days off, but, you know, the way these lunar cycles work, you know, you can get uh, events, you know, either side of them by a few days or so, so I thought that was an interesting observation, but uh, as far as that, that observation, I don't have anything dramatic uh, to report at the moment that I've seen. Mark, thank you so much for chatting with us. My pleasure. Take care. Talk to you next week. My guest has been Mark Leibovit, editor and publisher of the Leibovit VR newsletters, also known as VRTrader.com. If you have any questions for Mark or for any of our guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. Find us on X at HowStreet. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.